number one Iron Age booty daddy. You know, the world's changed a lot in the last 30 years. I remember when I was a little kid seeing news stories about this brand new thing called email, right? And people were kind of confused about it. In fact, you can actually go see the Today Show and them talking about email, you know, uh, oh, was it 25 years ago? I was still a little kid, but I remember dial-up internet, things like that, right? Old flash games that had come out. And then as the internet started becoming more powerful, you were able to use it for search engines and you were able to send documents and, and, and good Lord, the ability to send a, a, a long listed letter, an email, and it would get to somebody within 10 to 30 minutes, depending on your internet speeds. And then the internet kept making advancements forward. And eventually it got to the point where, well, we could have it right here on this thing that we call a phone, which isn't really a great name for this thing. We just call it cell phone because, well, the cellular device that came with it, the mobile device that came before this, well, we just kind of transferred that name over. This is more like a supercomputer and it gave us access to the world at our fingertips 24-7, 365 days a year, unless it's a leap year, and in that case, we don't count it because you're only four years old at 20. Anyway, I digress. That was a terrible joke. Technology has advanced so rapidly in the last 30 years, and Gen Z seems to want to take a step back. There are a plethora of articles popping up today, or, well, I shouldn't say today, but recently, talking about how Gen Z is actually looking to get away from the smartphone and go back to what we would, what they're calling dumb phones, which I find that an insult because the phones that they're talking about, I marveled at when I was like 13. I was like, how does this even work? Text message? And they're like, yeah, what's a text message? And they're like, well, it's kind of like an email, but you send it and then they'll get it like right away. And you, what do you mean? They're like, yeah, no. And you could text and they used to charge you like a dollar a text if you went over your rates. And then your parents would get really mad at you and you would tell your friends to cough up the money so that way you could pay your pay. Anyway, <laughs> non sequiturs aside, let's get over into this article over on CNBC.com. And I chose this just, it's the first article that I saw. But over here, dumb phones are on the rise in the U.S. as Gen Z looks to limit screen time. Okay. Dumb phones may be falling out of fashion on a global scale, but it's a different story in the U.S. Companies like HMD Global, the maker of Nokia phones, which, yeah, the Nokia, what was it? Oh, I can't remember the model, but the one that you could shoot with a 9 mil and the thing would still make a phone call. Yeah continues to sell millions of mobile devices similar to those used in the early 2000s. This includes what's known as feature phones, traditional flip phones or slide phones that have additional features like GPS or hotspot. This here is interesting to me because I thought that it was just the older generation who was wanting to take a step back from the smartphone technology, right? And not have something on them all the time that was connected to the internet. But it would seem that as technology has just leaped forward with just boundless energy and just boundless limitations, that another generation also wants to take a step back from it. And in fact, I have seen several creators that I follow stepping back from smartphones and going back to what they're calling dumb phones. Can we just call them what they are? Cell phones. They're just a cellular telephone, a mobile telephone. Okay. I think you can see it with certain Gen Z populations. They're tired of the screens, said Jose Briones, a dumb phone influencer and moderator of the subreddit r slash dumb phones. They don't know what's going on with mental health and they're trying to make cutbacks. The one thing that we have seen is that the more that people are connected to and interact on social media, it seems that that correlates to a rise in depression levels, especially among the young people. And those studies are very recent. It's, I mean, we've only been able to gather data like that very recently because keep in mind, social media, social media really wasn't around. I mean, YouTube 
has only been around since 2005 and like nobody knew about it then. Nobody really knew about YouTube until, I mean, I was in high school, until at least I was in high school, until like 2008, when it really started getting popularity. And then it's Facebook and MySpace before it. I mean, MySpace was the big one and your parents didn't want you on MySpace because admittedly, there was a lot of bad stuff on MySpace, but they equated it to the old school chat rooms. All of this is radically new and we're not quite sure what it's doing to the psyche of young people or just society in general. That connectivity that we have where our brains are linked to the internet 24-7. The only way that it can be more linked is literally if Elon Musk gets his technology done and chips your brain, which that's a terrifying thought. But this may be a good thing. Gen Z if they really are feeling the fatigue of being tapped in 24-7, this might be a good thing. In the U.S., feature flip phone sales were up in 2022 for HMD Global, with tens of thousands sold each month. At the same time, HMD's global feature phone sales were down, according to the company. So, up in the U.S., down globally. Well, that could be explained by the fact that the U.S. does is one of the world's top technological leaders. So as countries who are lesser developed and don't have the wealth that we have here in the U.S. gain access to these things or uh, e reach a certain economic level, they go out and they buy these phones, right? Whereas we've had these phones for a number of years. In 2022, almost 80% of feature phone sales in uh, 2022 came from the Middle East, Africa, India, according to CounterPoint research. But some see that number shifting as a contingency of young people in the U.S. revert back to dumb or minimalist phones. Uh, and I honestly think that the terminologies that they're using here is a little bit rhetorical, but... In North America, the market for dumb phones is pretty much flatlined, said Moorhead. But I could see it getting uh, to five, uh, getting up to a 5% increase in the next five years, if nothing else, based on the public health concerns that are out there. And that is a key thing here. As, as we are constantly evolving with technology... None of us have ever really stopped to ask with the rate that we're moving with technology, what exactly that does to the mental well-being of people. You know, I've long believed that people usually only post their best life on the internet. Now, some people out there, uh, especially during Facebook and the MySpace days, got to a point where they realized that uh, clicks and likes came from saying, oh, woe is me, my day is bad, send prayers my day is bad and a lot of people would like and post and do that and i think that that created this really bad circular just distortion of how we live our day-to-day -day lives and how we thought of what really being depressed was you see it seems that the more that we're tapped into the social media the screen time the inundation of the news see televisions at one point in time well, they used to stop broadcasting at midnight, right? You used to only have a certain news cycle, and now it's 24-7. And it would seem that with a rise in technology, a certain group of people want to take a step back. And honestly, if they can get me my, my slidey phone back with like the keyboard and stuff like that, who knows? Maybe I'll take a step back from the smartphone as well not sure yet i do a lot on youtube and and there's a lot of data that i track throughout the day but ladies and gentlemen let me know what you think about this is gen z on to something here Are, by taking a step back away from the smartphones is that something that we should be doing is social media do you believe it to be the rise in a mental health crisis or at least you know, contributing to the rise in the mental health crisis in the U.S. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And never forget that every single Sunday, I do a special live stream dedicated to everybody who comments on my channel. It's called Sunday Coffee, and it's at 11 a.m. Central. Oh, and guys, don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell for me. Oh, and like the video. 
But let me know what you guys think about this and tell me what your thoughts are on smartphones and maybe what your favorite phone was that you had when uh, when you were growing up before the day and age of smartphones for those of us who are old enough to remember. Cheers, everybody. Thank you all so much for checking out this video. And I would ask, beg, borrow, and steal just to get you guys to click the links down in the description below and become a part of my Gilded server or my drinkwithcrazy.locals.com. Oh, and by the way, I'm also over on Rumble too. Don't tell YouTube. See you there.